What's up YouTube, welcome to my channel. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, hello again. Um, I did some filming at the end of this school year and I filmed one of my absolute, absolute all time favorite units, which is when we do literature circles that are based in historical fiction at the end of the school year. This is something I've been working on fine tuning for three years. Um, so if you are making a curriculum or a unit of study, know that it's not probably going to be perfect the first time and that is okay because it just gets better with time as you improve it. This unit is our very last reading unit that we do in the school year and it's very student centered and student led which is one of my favorite things to see how much they have grown and how strong they are as learners and communicators of their reading and their understanding. So we do a historical fiction unit that is right before this where we teach how to read historical fiction and then they dive into these literature circle groups. They are a five book unit. It's four to six kids are reading each book and it is leveled. So the five books that we do is Bud Not Buddy, Watson's Go to Birmingham, The Boundless, uh, Sarah Plain and Tall, and Brave Like My Brother. And I will leave all the titles down below with their author. Now, these five books are all historical fiction books. Um, the Boundless is borderline on fantasy. It is our highest level of reading um, for our fourth graders. And it talks about the Transcontinental Railroad, Railroad, which is one of our history standards in California. So that's why we kind of picked that. Um, but they're all wonderful. What I'm going to show you next is a clip of the final project. So there are five jobs that every child in the group gets at some point or another and they rotate through. So we have a super story sketcher where they sketch the scene. We have a super story teller where they write a summary of the chapter they read with their group that day. The word wizard who finds three unfamiliar words, looks them up in a depth and dictionary finds the context clues for the word and then defines it for the group. We have the discussion director who writes three plausible questions that are not yes or no questions and then possible answers and also guides the discussion. Clever connector is our last one. The clever connector makes three connections on that day that they are that job. One to themselves, one to another book, and one to world. And they share those with a group and then ask for any other connections in their discussion. I have my students rotate through a four part model. So they are on alternating schedules but they do these four jobs every single day. So the first round, or doesn't have to be first, but a round, the first one round, is where they read the chapter assigned for that day with their group. This practices fluency, this practices coaching, this practices understanding with a group, and everyone reads together because not everyone is exactly at the same level and they can support each other. The next thing they do is they prepare for discussion. This is where they write about their reading. So what they do is they take that job and they go into their journal, they set up their journal. We do a lot of setup for this because um, they're kind of just learning how to like note take and really dive deeper into writing about reading and so they develop about a page of writing based on their job and any other questions they might have and they will also write down what they hear somebody share in the literature circle group the last or the third job they do is they word study. So in the beginning of the year, we do a words their way, which is developmental spelling patterns. And at the end of the year, we do word study, where they are breaking apart prefixes, suffixes, meanings, roots, and they are coming up with synonyms, antonyms, using it in a sentence, practicing the spelling of the word, drawing a picture of the word. So they're really zooming into some study words. And I use word of the day cards for that, so they are not, um, text specific for that part because everyone's reading a different book. And the last round is the discussion group. That's our literature circle and that is my absolute favorite part. In the very beginning when I do this I guide these discussions and I tell who speaks first and how you ask a question and how you listen to somebody else. But by week two and three I pull out and I just get to experience kids discussing books and that is by far as a teacher one of my absolute favorite things. So after all 25 days are done of literature circles, final reflection phase of their book. 
They get a packet with the five jobs that they've been doing for 25 days with their text, and they pick the best of the best. Their best connections, their best sketches, their best words they found, their best question and answers, and then they summarize the whole book. And what they do is I do like a faux cover of their book so they can replicate the cover that already exists for the book, or they can pick their favorite scene or something else that stands out that's important for the book and they make a cover. And then they make little match boxes that go on the inside that flip open, which you'll see in the video, of what they have been learning. So they transfer that packet onto these little match boxes so it's more inter er, interactive. And then they draw a picture to represent what they learned for that job. So some of my kids like to draw a picture that represents like the wacky word wizard and they draw like a little wizard with words coming out of a wand. Um, whereas other kids draw a picture of their word that really they came to understand through this text. So there's going to be two videos. The first video that you're going to see is the end result. My kids working on their final projects and after they've done it. The second video you're going to see is my kids interacting in their literature circle discussion and just listening to kids talk about books. really hope you enjoy. Give it a thumbs up if you do something similar. Um, ask questions if you want to know more. I try to like condense down the most important parts that you need to know, but I hope you enjoy seeing my kids. I miss my kids so much in the summer and they were so excited to film this for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye!